everyone is buzzing about the magic of protein for fitness and weight loss. But when us, regular gals, listen to those mighty men, we can't help but wonder. Does this superhero nutrient really apply to us? How much protein do we need when we're trying to lose weight? What kind? What is it? And why bother in the first place? And then we imagine turning into the Hulk with every chicken bite. Well, let me assure you ladies, this will not happen. Unless you take steroids. But you know better than that. Hello my dears and welcome. I'm Marina, a registered dietitian, and I'm here to be your guide on your weight loss journey. Today we will discover the importance of protein for our weight loss journey. We will learn what protein is, what it's made of, how it can help us feel more satiated and lose even more weight, and what kind of protein foods are there. Let's get into it. What is protein? The term protein originates from the Greek word proteos, meaning primary, leading, or holding first place. And that already tells you a lot. It is very important nutrient for our overall health for men and women, but especially when we are trying to lose weight. Protein is highly complex nitrogen-containing substance found universally in living organism and it plays a pivotal role in fundamental life-sustaining chemical processes. Proteins are very large molecules made up of amino acids which are the building blocks of protein. They are present throughout the body, in muscles, bones, skin, hair and nearly every other body part or tissue. They fuel various chemical reactions and even contribute to hemoglobin, which is the carrier of oxygen in our blood. There are over 10,000 different proteins that collectively shape and sustain our body and maintain our well-being. Proteins also serve a crucial role in our biochemistry. So they don't just have structural functions as a building blocks for our body parts, but are also biologically relevant molecules as they act as enzymes. Enzyme protein accelerate reaction in our body and are also called catalysts. Catalyzed reactions are one million or more times faster and without proteins acting as enzymes, our body reaction would be too slow and we would die because life without enzymes is not possible. Proteins are a part of our DNA. They also act as the transport molecules, as hormones, as antibodies for good immune system and are also involved in the process of movement because our muscles are made of them. So think about it. Your beautiful hair, skin, nails, those strong muscles, it's protein. Proteins can also be used as energy as they provide 4 calories per gram. However, they are not the primary choice as an energy source. Our body much rather use them to make it its own material. So you see, protein not just for the bodybuilders. They are essential for all humans because our bodies are made out of them. What are proteins made of? As we mentioned, Proteins are made up of amino acids. Amino acids join together with peptide bonds to form a long chain, much as beads are arranged on a string. Although there are hundreds of amino acids that exist in nature, only about 21 amino acids are needed to make all the proteins found in the human body and most other forms of life, as only these 24 appear in the genetic code of life. And while there are only 21 different types of amino acids, the various combinations, sequences and arrangements of these amino acids give rise to the incredibly diversity of proteins found in living organisms. Here is the list of all amino acids that proteins are made of. I know, this chemistry talk is getting out of hand, but trust me, knowledge is important for later when we will discuss protein food sources. The genes in our DNA provide the instructions for creating some of the listed amino acids, but not all, specifically nine of them. 
This might be because it's more efficient for our bodies to get certain amino acids directly from the outside source, which is food we eat, rather than making them from scratch. This way, we save energy. While this strategy helps us survive, it also means we rely on getting some amino acids from the environment and other living things to build proteins. So, if we can produce some of the needed amino acids on our own, what about those others we can't? For those, we have to rely on protein sources from food, and that's why we call these amino acids essential. There are nine essential amino acids which cannot be produced from other amino acids or be synthesized independently, so it is necessary to consume them through food in sufficient quantities. Those are histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, and valine. This is of importance because essential amino acids are found in particular protein-containing foods. And in some protein foods, we get the whole package of essential amino acids, while in other protein foods, we get only some of them. We will talk about this a bit later. In addition to essential amino acids, we know amino acids that are conditionally essential. Specifically, there are six of them. Those amino acids are essential under specific conditions or illnesses or threats such as trauma, birth injury, etc. In those situations, the body's demand for those amino acids might exceed its ability to self-produce them and they become essential. This happens with newborn infants or people with liver diseases, burn victims, etc. So in this case, one would need to obtain those amino acids through their diet and that's why they are co called conditionally essential. In the end, we have some leftover amino acids, six of them, that are non-essential, which means that the body can produce them in sufficient quantities. Where does protein come from? Unlike plants that can form organic compounds such as carbohydrates themselves, utilizing carbon dioxide in the air during process of photosynthesis, animals cannot do that. And we humans are animals. So we need to obtain substances for our body's building blocks and energy from an outside source. For humans, this outside source is food. And in order to get protein for our bodies, we must consume foods that contain protein. Ingested proteins from food are then broken down into amino acids through digestion. Some ingested amino acids are used for protein biosynthesis, meaning they turn into our muscles, hair and skin, while others can be converted to glucose, meaning energy or they can be fed into the citric cycle, which again can release energy from proteins. This use of protein as a fuel is particularly important under starvation conditions as it allows the body's own proteins to be used to support life, particularly those found in muscle. Protein quality. Protein is found in a large number of foods of animal and plant origin as they all contain some protein, but the amount of protein present in those foods varies widely, so some foods are more protein rich than others. But it's not just the amount of protein in certain foods that's important, but also the quality of the protein. The quality of a protein is vital when considering the nutritional benefits that it can provide. When food item has a substantial protein content in a relatively small amount of energy, we classify those foods as high quality protein source. This is because protein primarily serves as a supplier of amino acids rather than a main source of energy. A good example of high-quality protein source are chicken breasts. They are lean, meaning they have minimal fats and zero carbohydrates. 100 grams of chicken provides us with around 160 calories and around 30 to 32 grams of protein, zero grams of carbs and very little to almost none fat. So, it's a high-quality protein source because it has substantial protein content in a small amount of energy. 
On the other hand, peanut butter would be bad example of high quality protein source because it offers little protein in a big amount of energy, which we don't want when trying to lose weight. 100 grams of peanut butter provides us with around 630 calories and 24 grams of protein. As one gram of protein offers four calories, that means that only 96 of those 630 are from protein and others come from fat and a bit from carbs. To get the 32 grams of protein we got from 100 grams of chicken, we would need to eat more than 100 grams of peanut butter, but that would cost us around 700 calories comparing to 160 from that chicken. So no, peanut butter is not a protein source, it's a fat source. Although delicious, we should be careful about how much we eat it, as for weight loss we need to be mindful of caloric intake to stay in calorie deficit. It is also important that our protein source has a lot of protein in a somewhat acceptable amount so we don't have to eat tons of it in order to meet our protein requirements. For example, let's take broccoli. 100 grams of broccoli offers only 40 calories, which is great, but only mere two and a point grams of protein. To match that 32 grams of protein from that chicken, we would need to eat more than a kilogram of broccoli, which is not doable and not exciting. So broccoli isn't a protein source, it's the vegetable and has some carbohydrates, fiber, water, and vitamins and minerals. Great vegetable and great companion to a weight loss diet, but not a protein source. There are several measurement scales and techniques that are used to evaluate the quality of protein, but for our weight loss journey, we will focus on biological value of protein. Biological value is a measure that shows us how much protein from food is used by the body to build its own proteins. Foods with highest biological value are eggs and egg whites, whey protein, meat, fish and dairy products. In general, animal sources tend to be superior in both quantity and quality when compared with plant sources such as legumes. Of course, this does not mean that we have to eat the listed food if for some reason we cannot or do not want to. It is only necessary to understand how and with what to replace them, which we will explain later. Another important indicator of protein quality is the content of the essential amino acids. Foods that contain each of the nine essential amino acids that we talked about earlier are so-called complete or whole protein foods. And it goes without saying, those are also the same protein foods that have the highest biological value. Typically, all dietary animal protein sources are considered to be complete proteins. Animal-based protein foods such as eggs, dairy, meat and seafood provide all nine of the essential amino acids in adequate amounts. But there is a plant source that needs honorable mentioning. Soy-based foods. Soy-based foods such as tofu, tempeh and others stand out as a superhero plant food as they also contain all nine of the essential amino acids and can be a great protein addition to a diet. Proteins from other vegetable sources such as grains, other legumes, seed, etc. are incomplete proteins as they are generally lacking one or two essential amino acids. Legumes tend to be deficient in amino acids methionine, cereals slow in lysine and tryptophan, etc. So, if individual desires to get all of their protein from plant sources, they will need to consume a variety of legumes, soy, grains, nuts and seeds to ensure com consumption of all essential amino acids. The combination of a different plant-based foods and dishes such as rice and beans or hummus and bread results in a complementary effect that raises the protein quality when compared with either of these food types consumed alone.
So it is totally possible for adults to obtain adequate amounts of high quality protein from vegetarian or vegan diet, but in that case, one needs to plan their diet more carefully and in terms of weight loss, rely on legumes and soy based foods for highest protein yields and low calorie content. Here I must add a disclaimer about animal protein sources. Despite their highest biological value with complete amino acid profile and numerous vitamins and minerals, animal sources of protein should be consumed more carefully as it is easy to go overboard with saturated fat that those foods contain naturally. Saturated fat is a part of a healthy diet in moderate amount, but a lot of people exceed daily recommended intake for saturated fat, which is max 10% of daily energy need. How much protein do I need and why? Dietary recommendations for protein intakes in adults have historically been expressed in grams per kilograms of body weight. The current US recommended dietary allowances is 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, which generally comes down to 10 to 15% of total daily energy expenditure. The Food and Agriculture Organization of UN and World Health Organization recommendation is 0.83 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. In 2012, the European Food Safety Authority established its population reference intake for protein as 0.83 grams of protein per kilogram per body weight for all adults. Other European recommendations specify similar recommendations and they don't differ between genders. Some nutrition societies recommend a bit higher protein intake for older adults to combat age-related losses of muscle mass and muscle strength with a protein intake of 1 gram of protein per kilogram of body weight. Although RDAs provide guidance to help societies avoid deficiency, there is a significant difference between preventing deficiency and obtaining optimal nutrient levels and yes, those RDA recommendations are quite low. Plus, they apply to healthy people whose BMI is in the range of 20 to 30. If your BMI is in the range of 20 to 25, you are in so-called healthy weight range. If you fall into higher category from 25 to 30, you find yourself in the overweight range and BMI of 30 and above falls into obesity range. You can check your BMI with simple online tools. It's an easy to calculate measure of obesity based on the ratio of your weight and your height. Its intention is to measure obesity in a population, but on individual level, it has some limitation as it doesn't distinguish between muscle and fat. So someone with a higher muscle mass might be misjudged as overweight and someone with higher fat mass and lower muscle mass as healthy. Still, it's a quick and easy way to get general idea. Now, if you are in the 20 to 25 BMI range, you are in the healthy weight zone. No urgent need for weight loss, maybe just some minor adjustments. But if you are in the 25 to 30 range, thinking about shedding some pounds, then increasing protein intake beyond RDI will be a good move. Same goes for people with BMI over 30, but for those, we will give an extra recommendation on protein adjustments. But the reason why protein intake should be higher is important for all. Several studies have suggested that higher protein diets may increase total weight loss and increase the percentage of fat loss. Meta-analysis of studies Hansen and colleagues conclude that increased protein intake reduce body weight compared to lower protein intakes. High protein diet is basically anything above 1 gram of protein per kilogram of body weight. Secondly, protein stimulates dietary induced thermogenesis to a greater extent than other macronutrients. It means that protein requires more energy to digest and metabolize when we eat it compared to fats and carbohydrates. 
This can help to increase metabolism and burn more calories throughout the day. Protein also can help to preserve lean body mass during weight loss. Loss of lean body mass can happen in the weight loss process if our protein intake is too low and we don't stimulate our muscles with strength training. And this is not good because more muscles we keep, more calories our body needs and we can eat more. If we lose a lot of muscle during weight loss process, it's harder to maintain a healthy weight after. Several clinical trials have found that consuming more protein than the recommended dietary allowance not only reduces body weight, but also enhances body composition by decreasing fat mass and preserving fat-free mass in both low-calorie and standard-calorie diets. Additionally, high-protein diet not only provides weight loss effects, but can also prevent weight regain after weight loss. Finally, protein is a nutrient with most satiating effect. Diet high in protein have been shown to help reduce body fat even without restricting calories or other nutrients because they are highly satiating and can reduce cravings, meaning that this can lead to subconscious reduction in calories. High protein diets therefore reduce appetite as they can keep us feeling full with less food. Protein reduces levels of hunger hormone ghrelin and boosts hormone peptide Y, a hormone that makes us feel full. Overall, high protein intake might favor a negative energy balance when we are in a caloric deficit for weight loss. This can happen by increasing energy expenditure and spontaneous decrease in energy intake, which both might contribute to normalization of body weight. So, sufficient protein intake can really help on your weight loss journey. Now for the numbers. Data suggests that high-protein diets that contain 1.2 to 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram a day provide improvements in appetite, body weight management, cardiometabolic risk factors, or all of these health outcomes. Others conclude that even higher and broader range is appropriate and safe. 1.5 to 2.5 grams of protein per kilogram a day, especially when paired with activity to reap the benefits of sustaining fat-free mass. Let's break down the protein intake recommendations for weight loss and obesity categories. For those aiming to lose weight with a BMI up to 30, the suggested protein intake ranges from 1.2 to 2 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. If you are an active individual in this category, leaning towards the higher end, starting at 1.2, could be beneficial. Always remember, these figures are not one size fits all. Individualization is key. Calculate your protein needs within this range, aiming for at least the minimal number, and going beyond that will be okay. Now, considering obesity, let's take an example. If a woman with a BMI of 35 weighs 100 kilograms and is 175 centimeters tall, the initial recommendation suggests more than 200 grams of protein daily, which might seem really excessive. To refine this, we look at the ideal weight based on a BMI of 23, which falls into healthy range. This doesn't dictate your weight loss goal, but serves as a useful reference for protein evaluation. Use online BMI calculators to find the weight associated with a BMI of 23 for your height, then apply the protein range of 1.2 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram a day. For our example, the ideal weight is 70 kilograms and at 1.5 grams of protein, the adjusted recommendation is a more manage manageable 105 grams of protein per day. Meeting this higher protein target can be challenging, so focus on incorporating protein-rich foods into each meal. Don't stress about precise grams per meal. Simply ensure a good serving of protein in each. 
if one meal is lower in proteins, compensate with higher protein options in other meals. With protein-rich foods in every meal and perhaps a snack, achieving the higher protein target becomes feasible. Now, let's delve into specific protein-rich foods. Protein food sources. Protein can be found in a range of dietary sources, including both animal and plant-based foods, as well as in the widely promoted sports supplement industry. Now, let's look at the protein food sources. First, we have animal sources of protein food, which are meats, organ meats and meat products, seafood such as fish, shrimps and other seafood, eggs, milk and dairy products such as yogurt, kefir, cheese and whey protein. Although these animal foods are classified as protein, this does not mean that they only contain protein. Some of those foods also contain fats and a little bit of carbohydrates. That means that the energy value of some listed animal proteins will be higher as fats provide additional 9 calories per gram and carbs 4 calories per gram. When creating your own weight loss diet, this is of some importance because of the total calorie count of specific foods. To stay in caloric deficit, it is best to cut extra nutrients where it's possible. For example, one could emphasize lean meats and low-fat dairy products in the diet as the calorie count of these foods is lower because they have less fat. Let's look at the animal foods one by one. Meat is a highly controversial food because it's a great source of protein and other nutrients, but some people believe that eating it is unethical and unnecessary. The decision on the consumption of meat is solely yours, but if the decision is based only on the idea that meat is unhealthy, well, that's simply not true. It's a great source of protein, zinc, creatine, ham iron, vitamin B12, and so on. The most important thing about meat is that not all sources of the meat are the same. I'm sure you already know that eating sausages, pâtés, salami is not the same as eating steak that came from grass-fed beef. It's not the same if we eat McDonald's burgers and fries every day or lean steak with grilled vegetables. It is important with what we combine that meat and to mostly eat it in its primal form and not ultra-processed. And of course, to use gentle cooking methods as high temperatures can promote formation of harmful compounds. You can choose white meats for its lower fat and cholesterol content and therefore lower calorie content, which is useful in weight loss process, or you can choose red meats for higher micronutrient content, but focus on leaner cuts for keeping your calorie intake in check. Also, try to keep your intake of processed meats low, but if you like your sandwiches, you can still include leaner options with lower salt content such as turkey or chicken, ham or salami. Aim for a hand-sized portion of meats or around 100 to 150 grams of meat if it's your main source of protein in a meal. On to the seafood. Seafood is an important source of animal protein in many diets around the world, especially in coastal areas. You are probably familiar with the idea that eating fish is healthy as it's staple food in the Mediterranean diet, which is probably the most researched diet there is. The World Health Organization has identified the Mediterranean diet as an effective nutritional strategy for the prevention and control of non-communable diseases. It is also associated with lower mortality and morbidity and numerous health benefits. Although Mediterranean diet proposes lower intake of meat, it promotes eating seafood, especially fatty fish. Fish is a great source of high-quality protein as 100 grams of fish provides around 20 grams of protein. One portion is usually about 100 to 150 grams, so that comes at around 25 to 30 grams of protein per portion of fish. It is also a great source of iodine and other minerals and vitamins, such as vitamin D. 
Smaller fish that we can eat with their bones, such as sardines, are also a great source of phosphorus and calcium. Oily fish are also rich in omega-3 fatty acids that are very important for cardiovascular and cognitive health and their intake is usually too low in modern diets. Although oily fish is slightly higher in calories due to its fat content, it's still considered low-calorie food. The American Heart Association also recommends eating fish at least two times a week, particularly fatty fish like salmon, lake trout, sardines, and albacore tuna, which are high in omega-3s. Oily fish are higher in calories as they contain both protein and fat, while fight fish such as cod, halibut, sea bass, snapper, etc. are lower in calories as they contain mostly just protein. Choose the one you like and have access to. Also, don't forget about shellfish. Shellfish are low in calories and rich sources of lean proteins, healthy fats and many micronutrients. Shellfish are low in calories and high in lean protein and healthy fats, making them excellent food to eat while trying to lose weight. 100 grams of shrimps offer around 100 calories and around 25 grams of protein. Although there are no maximum recommended intake amounts for shellfish, they may accumulate heavy metals from the environments, so it's best to recommend moderate intake, but of course they can be nutritious addition to a balanced weight loss diet for the most healthy people without allergies. Aim for a hand-sized portion of fish or around 100 to 150 grams per meal. Next, let's look at the humble egg. In the past, Eggs have been demonized as it was claimed that they are bad for the heart because of the high cholesterol content. But many studies in recent years have examined the correlation between eating eggs and the risk of heart disease and found no association in healthy population. So eggs made a comeback and are nowadays often called superfood for their rich amount of nutrients. One larger eggs contain around 6 grams of protein and 5 grams of fat and in total around 70 to 80 calories. More importantly, the protein in egg contains all the essential amino acids in the right proportions so they have high biological value. Eggs are also rich in vitamins, minerals and antioxidants. There are no studies that suggest how much eggs is too much, but they conclude that eating three whole eggs per day is safe. Eggs are protein-rich, lower-calorie food, very satiating and a great option to add to your diet if you enjoy eating them. Aim for two to three eggs per meal. You could also add extra egg whites for even higher protein content without too much extra calories. What about milk and dairy products? Foods such as milk and dairy products produced from the milk of mammals were staple in some humans' diet for a long time and remember why. Throughout history, people were resourceful in their search for food as it was essential to gain enough energy to survive regardless of the source. With agriculture revolution and domestication of animals, we learn that cows or other animals' milk can be also good for humans. And just to add, humans aren't the only species that steal milk from other mammals. A lot of animals in nature do that all the time as the aim is to survive. From an evolutionary perspective, dairy isn't necessary for optimal health, but certain cultures have been consuming dairy regularly for thousands of years and study document how their genes adapted to milk and dairy products in the diet. So for many people, it is the easiest way to get the nutrients and their effects on human health are mostly positive. There are many dairy products, but let's look at the classic milk first. Regular glass of semi-skimmed milk offers around 8 to 8.5 grams of protein, 4 to 5 grams of fat, 12 to 13 grams of carbohydrate, and around 120 calories. Although glass of milk provides us with some protein, milk isn't the most protein-dense food compared to meat, fish, eggs and other dairy products. 
As we need higher protein intakes for weight loss, we need to learn which dairy products can offer us the highest protein content per volume. Those products are Greek yogurt, skir, cottage cheese, also regular cheese. But some of those products tend to be also high in fats, therefore they will have higher calorie content like cheese. So, for a dairy product to be a great protein source, it's better to have lower fat content. As you decrease the fat in dairy products, you cut calories, saturated fat and cholesterol, while protein, calcium and most other vitamins and minerals remain high. For example, 100 grams of 2% fat Greek yogurt contains around 10 grams of protein and about 70 calories. So, when on a weight loss diet, we would rather choose Greek yogurt with 2% fat rather than 10% fat to limit calories from fat as the 10% version will have the same amount of protein but around 130 calories because of the extra fat. Of course, we need some fat in the diet, but in that case, we can have more of it for less calories. Also, if we want to enjoy some cheese, it's best if we use low-fat cheeses such as low-fat mozzarella, ricotta cheese, low-fat cottage cheese or smaller amounts of other full-fat cheeses. So, if you tolerate dairy products and enjoy them, you could include them in your weight loss diet as there are no compelling evidence that people should avoid it and a lot of evidence of benefits. To better monitor your calorie intake and weight loss process, it's best to choose lower fat options. If you like your dairy products and are not intolerant or allergic, they can be a great staple in a weight loss diet. Aim for 150 to 250 grams or 5 to 8 ounces or a cup of Greek yogurt or other dairy products as a main source of protein in a meal. What about whey protein? A lot of people are skeptic of whey protein because its usual form, which is powder. But we eat other foods that look like powder, right? And are different than their original state. Whey protein is a mixture of protein isolated from whey, which is liquid part of the milk. During cheese production, it gets separated from milk solids and then processed into a powder. Don't be afraid of powder foods as we know so many of them, like dried milk, spices, etc. Proteins in whey are very high quality as they contain all essential amino acids and are also quickly and easy digestible and absorbed. They can promote muscle maintenance and growth when paired with strength training, but overall protein intake is more important. Whey protein is also very satiating and filling, which is important with controlling the appetite during weight loss process. If you tolerate lactose, you can choose concentrate as it is the cheapest, but if you want to keep carbs and fats really low and have problem digesting lactose, choose isolate or hydroisolate. Standard portion of whey isolate will provide around 20 to 25 grams of pure protein. You can have it as a simple shake or add it to carb-based meals such as oatmeal, pancakes, muesli or granola bars, breads. You can add it to fruit smoothies and other dishes to improve the composition of your meals because you want to incorporate protein in every meal if possible. Now let's look at the plant sources of protein. The right plant-based foods can be excellent source of protein and other nutrients, often with fewer calories than animal products, but as we mentioned, it is important to eat a variety of them to acquire all essential amino acids and also include more of those with higher protein content per volume. Plant protein foods with high protein contents are legumes or pulses such as beans, lentils, chickpeas, soybeans, Soy products such as tofu, tempeh and edamame, seitan and plant protein powder as supplement similar to whey protein powder but from plant sources. Listed are really the ones who pack the most protein per volume, some carbohydrates and usually small amounts of fats. So those should be primary sources of plant-based protein foods. 
Legumes such as bean, lentils, chickpeas, soybeans are rich and one of the best dietary sources of plant proteins. 100 grams of raw lentils, chickpeas and bees come at around 20 to 25 grams of protein. But legumes are also a good source of carbs with around 60 grams of carbs per 100 gram portion of legumes. So 100 grams of raw lentils can be one portion of protein in plant-based meal, providing around 25 grams of protein. 100 grams of raw legumes is about the same as the amount of 300 grams cooked or canned, and that comes to about a cup and a half. They are rich in fiber and good source of minerals and are linked to health benefits. Although they are considered highly nutritious food, some have digestion problems after eating them, such as bloating. If we start to include legumes in our diet on a regular basis, eventually GI symptoms fade away. Bloating can be also reduced by adding spiced cumin to water when cooking legumes. If you're eating legumes as a source of protein on your plate and not as a side vegetable, aim for 100 grams of raw legume as a portion, which comes down to one to one and a half cup, which means you will acquire around 25 grams of protein in a meal. You can enjoy them as curries, chilies, stews, baked in a burger patties, as a spread, in the salads, and so on. On to the soy products such as tofu and tempeh and other meat alternatives. They are made from soybeans. Those can be eaten also whole, but also can be turned into soy protein powder. Soybeans are rich in protein and all essential amino acids, fibers and vitamins and minerals and also antioxidants. Soy rich diets have been linked to some health benefits such as lowering cholesterol levels, blood sugar and pressure. On the other hand, people are concerned about other effects such as soy isoflavones mimicking effect of the hormone estrogen, but they have weaker and different effect than estrogen, so no worries for men and even less for ladies. Tofu is a great option, but since it's flavorless, it's a good idea to dress it up with other flavors such as soy sauce, vegetables and other spices. 100 grams of tofu contain about 12 grams of protein, 3 to 4 grams of carbs and 5 to 6 grams of fat coming together to total 100 and 110 calories. Then there's tempeh which is made from fermented soybeans. 100 grams of tempeh containing 20 grams of protein, 7 to 9 grams of carbs and 7 to 11 grams of fat coming together at around 160 calories. It's richer in calories because it's usually made with nuts or seeds, legumes or whole grains. Also, a great addition is edamame made from immature soybeans. It has decent amount of protein as 100 grams of edamame beans provides around 12 grams of protein with all essential amino acids, 8 to 9 grams of carbs and 5 grams of fat coming to 120 calories. So, if you like to replace some of the animal proteins in your diet for plant-based, soy products are a good choice. Aim for a palm-sized tofu and tempeh to get those plant proteins in. Seitan is another meat alternative, sometimes referred to as wheat meat as it's made from wheat gluten. One serving of seitan, which is around 100 grams, provides 20 to 22 grams of protein, 4 to 5 grams of carbs and 1 to 2 grams of fat coming to around 100 calories. So it's low in calories, has very little fat and contains some minerals. You can bake it, grill it, steam it, cook it, the same as tofu and tempeh. Seitan should be avoided by people who have celiac disease or have problem with gluten tolerance. Also, because it's highly processed food, it can be sometimes high in sodium, so check labels if you have to watch your sodium intake. Tofu and tempeh are better option, but for people with soy allergies, seitan will be better choice as an occasional substitute for meat. And lastly, there are plant protein powders. As we mentioned, protein powders can be quick, convenient and effective addition to your diet to meet your protein needs for the day, but are not as necessary for everyone. 
it's usually best to choose mixed plant protein powders with all the essential amino acids or soy protein powder that already contains all of them. They usually provide around 20 to 25 grams per scoop. So if you cannot meet your protein needs through diet alone, you can boost your intake with protein powders mixed in different foods such as pancakes, oatmeal, or just as a quick meal on the go as shakes or addition to smoothies. So those are the plant sources of protein that have the highest amounts of protein per volume. In other words, you get a lot of protein for small amounts of calories, which is of importance in a weight loss process. Of course, you can get some protein from other non-protein rich foods, but every gram counts. Good carb sources that have some protein are cereal grains and pseudo grains such as quinoa, buckwheat, millet, and even oats. Also, nuts, nut butters and seeds, which are mainly source of fat, have some protein, but do not treat them as a protein source as more than 60% of their calories come from fat. We can go quickly overboard with our favorite nut spread, such as peanut butter, and think it's just a great source of protein, but it's actually more source of fat and energy dense food. As we try to lower our energy intake in weight loss process, one should be cautious of quantity of portion control. Is too much protein bad for you? The benefits of high protein diet are well known, but there have been concerns that it may be harmful to the bones and kidneys. It has long been hypothesized that high protein diets increases the resorption of bones, which acts as buffers by increasing the acid load in the body, and some researchers argued that it increases risk for bone fracture and osteoporosis by accelerating bone resorption and urinary calcium excretion. However, a meta-analysis of 74 randomized controlled trials observed that subjects in the high-protein diet group were not significantly different from low-protein diet subjects with regards to bone mineral density. Furthermore, low-protein intake is generally considered a nutritional deficiency. In particular, it has been described as a factor affecting osteoporosis development in older adults. Framingham osteoporosis study shows that low protein intake negatively affect bone loss. Overall, high protein diets do not lead to reduced bone mineral density. On the contrary, high protein intake can help prevent bone loss in older adults who are prone to nutritional deficiencies. There have also been concerns that high-protein diets may deteriorate renal function, but researchers found no declining renal function when studying the safety of high-protein diets in a study of obese adults with normal renal function. While high-protein diets also do not affect renal function in healthy people, it can adversely affect renal function in people with kidney disease. There is not a clear definition of the upper limit of beneficial protein intake, but it was reported that protein intake up to 1.6 protein per kilogram a day, combined with energy restriction, did not pose a health hazard. However, more long-term clinical trials are required to identify a safe highest limit of high-protein diets. If you don't have kidney, liver, or other diseases that require monitoring of protein intake, you should be safe. And that's a wrap on our protein discussion, ladies. We've covered the what, why, and how much, leaving no protein stone unturned. Now, grab a pen and paper, write down your favorite protein-packed foods, and let's start crafting those high-protein meals. The golden rule? Let protein take the spotlight in your meal planning, pick your protein first, then add veggies or fruit, and finally, round it out with your carbs and fats. Trust me, making protein the star will make your journey less challenging. Thank you for tuning in, ladies. If you found these protein insights valuable, show some love with like and hit that subscribe button for more tips and tricks on your weight loss adventure. Join our tribe of weight loss warriors because remember, 
You've got this. Bye, and I'll catch you in the next video.